now you can see here pretty uh, yeah pretty close to the surface similar thing with the capacitor we will start with the big one capacitor has polarity so that's very important don't pay a lot of attention how you solder it um, there is a big um, black mark in the casing that's the negative and then just for redundancy you see the shape has two edges cut here here and, and the other I mean it's two edges here and at the same time there is uh, the same shape in the PDB okay so just to make sure um, where the positive and the negative goes so we have the black mark plus the shape of the base so we are gonna thin a bit Put a little, be careful with uh, putting too much tin here because this this base material is some kind of a plastic or polymer, and it gets, um, yeah, it, it can it gets very well stuck to the tin. So you don't want to have a lot of tin around. So just the legs, okay, obviously. So and now we do the same. Remember, negative in the, is in the back here, so the negative goes here. We put it in a way that. If this is visible from here that we see the path okay um, by the way if you use uh, if you use uh, ESCs like this that have uh, an external electrolytic capacitor you want to put this capacitor the filter one filtering one um, as far as possible to the ESC which goes here so that there is room this PDB 1.6 version is actually has a lot of a space so in principle you don't need to really take care much of this but if you want to make a doubly sure of, of that just put the capacitor this one as far as possible so it doesn't need to be centered as far as it's well connected obviously and then again I touch the pad and now it should melt with the leg yeah uh, this kind of capacitors, SMD capacitors now you see just touching the pad and it binds to the to the leg we will put a bit more this type of capacitors um, are structurally a bit more weak than the inductors that we just soldered before so I used to actually, I'm not going to show it in this video, but I will do it probably anyway later. Um, but I used to actually put some uh, hot glue or epoxy, two component epoxy, um, especially around the, to, around the base and, uh, and uh, to, to glue to the PDB, here in this area here and here. Because these legs, I mean, you can see that this you can still move a bit and this can be stressed during flight or in crisis and so on but that's optional, it's up to you and then the, the tiny one which is in my opinion it's one of the smallest SMD things that I would solder myself <laughs> smaller than that it can be a big pain and again this has polarity so I, as I explained before so we just put it on the top on the, the pads are big enough for this capacitor okay so okay so actually this goes this way so check positive and negatives now pushing down with care and then we put the soldering on one of the pads to melt to solder the legs that's it yeah and again, this is actually even more weak structurally, so I would put some, uh, as I said, epoxy or hot glue. And then we will continue with the other, uh, the 5 volt filtering components. Okay, so as you see here, I have already soldered the 5 volt filtering components. So we are gonna uh, solder now the first ESC. What I like to do in, in here, is actually thin 
in a generous way the the pads okay the motor so the ESC will go here in this case okay the one I'm gonna solder and I'll just put in this case kind of a, a significant amount of uh, tin just to make some kind of a cupola let's say cupola shape because we will so nice and shiny and then where the the power comes it's a bit more uh, tricky because there are holes so um, in my opinion in, in my experience it's good if you, if you just put a lot of uh, tin from the beginning part of it will go down through the holes so what uh, usually works is that you put uh, a thin layer kind of to cover the holes and, you, and then you let it dry you let it cool, uh, cool down a little bit solidify okay it doesn't need to be very nice now so that that uh, helps when you now put more tin that helps stopping uh, to that most of the pin, pin tin goes down the, the holes so now I'm gonna just add more tin here okay and now you see that it stays most of it stays on this side of the board even though I put a lot okay so it still went down but yeah a bit if you what you can do which is very another if, if you still see that a lot of tin has gone through the other side you just hit it hit it here and hit a bit now it goes down just just uh, thanks to gravity now we have the amount we want so now we have the also the ESC here I cut, you have to cut approximately uh, 50 millimeters on each side. I personally like to have it tight, so I used to cut around 12 millimeters in the motor side, the cables I mean of course to cut, um, and around 50 millimeters uh, in the power side. It's up to you. You can make them longer, shorter, shorter might be a bit tricky if you want to use the same method I'm using now, but up to you. So then, now it's very easy actually. So by the way, you have to check that the, I was doing it wrong actually. This is the final position, so positive, negative, positive, negative. So that has to go like this, right? So to start soldering, you flip it this way with the label, the main label up. And then you put it like this. Sorry. Okay, and now the only thing you have to do is to heat up. cables and they get sucked in to the pads okay one thing I forgot that I used to do is um, you see the the heat ring it's uh, covering big significant part of the cables in order to uh, prevent from the heat ring to to limit the, the the bending of the cables when we have to now bend it, bending, bend it back. What I used to do, I, I'm going to do it actually also in here. I just use a wire cutter like this and then I, I make a cut on the sides. Be careful not to damage the cable, but if uh, with a bit of practice you can do it quite safely and quickly. What this allows is let's see what this allows is that the cables can be now bent and the heat ring is both pro at the same time protecting almost uh, as before the cables and the connection here but it doesn't prevent the, the bending so I'm gonna do the same here which I had to do before and I forgot but it's not a big deal so just a cut in the heat ring from the side That's it. Now I'm able to turn it and you see the heat ring. It would not have allowed to bend it this way without cutting. So that's my 
objective to have it that flat. Okay, when we are here, now we have to meet the positive here in this part here and the same with the back. So what I used to do is basically I bend it here like this. Let's see. And I place it that's the if I have to choose one step that is the most painful is this one. But it's not that painful after some practice anyway. So now I have it, you see, kind of, I have it placed. Uh, and then the only thing I have to do is to carefully put the iron to melt the cable on the pad. That's it. And then I will do the same for the back. I recommend you actually, yeah, I should have said this before. I recommend you to do the interior uh, cables first because then you are not limited to move the ESC to the outside like I am now. I forgot about that. So please start with the, the cables that are in the interior. And that's up to you, but you can also solder the 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 diet actually afterwards so now it's gonna be hard to see but I'm gonna I'm gonna solder the negative here more thin now done so yeah you can see not that bad and this is, this is still allows some movement okay but um, again start soldering this cable and this here because are the ones that are a bit more tricky here you have more space but here the diode is quite close so we have one ESC so the only thing we have to do now is to continue with the rest of the ESCs